Hi guys, this is Jason Zak from Nathaniel School of Music. In this guitar lesson, I'm going to introduce you to five really popular and most practiced finger style or finger picking patterns for the acoustic guitar. Now, most of these are influenced by not only the guitar, it could be influenced by the banjo, by the mandolin and other folk instruments. But generally when you play the guitar with your fingers, you're tending to deal with a lot of interesting groovy stuff with a lot of independence. What I mean by that is coming from a piano perspective is you have one ingredient or one part of the hand which will produce something like what the left hand of the piano does while the other ingredients or the other fingers will do what the right hand does something like the bass clef and the treble clef uh, very different than you know just strumming a chord so the finger patterns can access each individual string and that's pretty much the workflow we are going to follow throughout this lesson so we are going to use these three fingers to play most of our patterns. In fact, all of the patterns. There are some guitar players who I've seen who use even the ring finger, you know. I'm not so confident with that. And I tend to, first of all, the way, the way you sit or the way you position yourself, try to be as relaxed as possible. And the way I do it is I try and keep my hand at an angle and you're going to use... Whenever you play with your, whenever you play with the index finger and the middle finger, they are going to be pulling towards you. They are going to be coming back towards you and ideally at an angle, you don't want to keep it straight, otherwise your wrist will hurt. So, so you're pulling it back like this, in an angle. Okay. Some people also grow some nails and or use picks which I don't do because I'm a primarily a piano player so while your thumb will will push down so this is generally how I'm placing my thumb and pretty much all of the work comes from these three fingers thumb index middle now what do I do with the other two fingers well what I prefer is I prefer to just leave them on the uh, guitar board on the wood it provides an additional support and if I ever need to use it for something you know maybe some percussion noise or to mute it then I will bring it into play but otherwise it's pretty much just stationed on the guitar itself just touching because if I keep it in the air I don't know it just feels like a little bit of a bad habit sometimes the fingers go up and it doesn't provide that opposing force which you need to kind of secure your hand firm on the instrument as far as my left hand goes which is the hand which pretty much drives the guitar around to produce melodies chords and whatnot you just learn whatever chords you would normally learn be it c major g major d minor a minor e minor e minor f major g major c it's just the right hand or the engine or the rhythm hand which is going to change. And that's what I'm pretty much going to do in this lesson. We are going to do five approaches for finger style playing. And you'll have this also ready to download as a notation file with tabs. So do consider being a member on our Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash Jason Zach. There'll also be some of my notes for not only the this lesson but also lessons in the past and which are coming up in the future and do consider being a part of our channel the Nathaniel School of Music channel all you have to do is hit the subscribe button and turn on the bell icon for regular notifications we do quite a few lessons we do lessons on song analysis music theory ear training piano guitar bass percussion production and whatnot so do consider being a part of our channel right so let's get cracking with our finger style guitar patterns <laughs> First of all, just to get our fingers engaged and a very popular pattern which most people start off with, even I do this a lot till this day, would just be to roll four notes with these three fingers of yours. 
Some people may even use their ring. I just find that my fingers are a bit too big for the guitar. I'm more of a bass player if you if I think about it. So how I go about it is play the thumb for the A string C. Now I'm holding C major chord. You can do it with anything, but just for the explanation's sake, I'm just choosing C major. So thumb, thumb, index, middle. Okay, C major, and slowly but surely try to get the rhythm or the engine pumping, and figure out a cyclic effect with your thumb as well. Just a natural flow or the natural movement of a cycle. Just to get better and better with it, put in some effort, and to make it interesting, you can do a nice chord pattern with me: C, G, G with B bass. You just fret these two notes. That's B, open D, G D. So C major, G, then. D minor, you could do. D minor, you need to bring your thumb to the third string from the uh, top. The D string, which will give you a natural D, and you fret these notes with your left hand. A D F with your middle, pinky, and index, and then A minor. Back to C major, G, D minor, E minor. You know, if you are uncomfortable with four notes, you can even do this with three notes. So you could just do thumb, index, middle, index. You can avoid the dub thumb on two notes. You can just do. If you would like to move your middle to the E. Every note is played individually, sort of like an arpeggio, you could call it. Okay, and another way to maybe take this a bit more forward could be make an elongated pattern, double the time of what it is. So to do that, I'll play it once for you. Okay. So you go all the way to the top. One, two. So you're creating an eight-note plucking arpeggio pattern as opposed to the earlier method, which was just four notes. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. Now you're trying to take it up to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three. Another nice way to count this could be one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and. Okay, the second chord. One and two. Or you could fret this and play a G. So C major, G major, D minor. Just to get some chords into the play, A minor. Okay, it's back to the progression again. C major, G major, D minor. Pum pum, you could do a little A bass. Tum pum pum. D minor, da da A minor. G major. Back to A minor. Right, guys. So that was pattern number one. We started with the four note one. Play all the four notes, or you can play three notes over a four-beat cycle, if you will. One, two, three, four. Or you could elongate the pattern over an eight-beat cycle.
Okay, so another thing you could try is something more popish, where you could divide the beats irregularly. You can do something like one two three, one two three, one two, 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 one two three, one two three, one two two, one two three, one two, one two three, one two three, one two, one two three, one two three, one two, one two three, one two three, one two. One two three, one two three, one two one. Okay, so those that's the first line of patterns, which basically include playing notes one by one in arpeggio. So these are all arpeggio patterns. Let's now move forward to the next finger style technique. Right, so this one uses a little bit of percussion. You can go. So I'm taking a G major chord this way. G T G T G low bass. So essentially, what your thumb does on the guitar is pretty much play chord roots. So if it's G major, it's going to play G. If it's C major. Going to play C and so on and so forth. So that's what your thumb does, while the other two fingers will be playing the remaining notes of the chord. So I have this pattern for you. This is a pattern a lot of people play. Like it's it's something most people start off with, I guess, on the guitar. So it goes thumb and then play two notes with your index as well as your middle finger. Thumb, and then you're getting this double stop thing going. So, and then you whack the guitar a little bit, not too hard, but just get a nice percussion sound going. Okay, so this is the pattern: one and two and three and four and one and two and three and. Few off beats here because I'm dividing the beat into two units. Uh, later, I'm going to show you. You can divide it further. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and let's change a chord. And three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and or you can change the chords a bit faster. One and two. Just for the last chord, you can ignore the and just do what we discussed earlier. Play all the notes one by one, right? For the last chord, I'm just sliding my hand from the C major shape just to a nice open D major chord, like an add four sound. So. G B B G over B basically. Then C add nine with that D. For some reason I like playing D in most of the chords on the guitar. So G B C. So this pattern basically has three ingredients: your thumb starting off, then. A double stop or two notes, like a mini chord, if you will, and then a nice chunk, a nice percussion noise uh, on your guitar. So start with this. Board 
we are dividing by 2 you can also then divide by 4 you can do something like 1 e and 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e 1 e and 1 e and a get in those e's and the ers 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and 1 e and a 2 e and a 3 e and 4 e and a 3 e and a 3 and 1 e and and or else if you want to divide by 3 also known as an 8th note triplet where the beat gets divided into 3 units we can call count it as 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 and a 1 and a 2 and a 3 and a 4 right so you count it as 1 and a 2 and a 2 G, B, C, and so on. One and a two and a dum, 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 dum. There we go. So depending on the time feel, what I call as time feel, you can divide by two and get this pattern. That's a quaver pattern. A semi quaver pattern or a triplet pattern. So the ingredients are your thumb for the first root of the chord, then the double stop playing two notes of the chord. And then of course the whack or the percussion. So this is the second technique for finger style guitar playing. Let's now move on to the third. technique is what we call as the Travis style picking method and there are two uh, levels to it if you will. The first level is I'm just going to demonstrate using the G major chord so you this is how it works in the simple way so you pluck the outer two notes that's your root of the chord and the upper structure or the upper note in this case B so and then you do the inner one and you count it as, you could count it as quavers. That's the, that's the basic way of doing this. Now, you have to move forward in time, right? So to do that, you can either go... That means I'm now doing crotchets with my thumb or quarter notes with my thumb. G, 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 or I could even do minims. Check that out. So the, the other two fingers are going while my thumb is going G, 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 or it can even go very lazy. G. This is more common. That's a basic pattern. It sounds quite good with most chord progressions, most songs. If you want to make this more interesting, we do something like... Keep this thumb going. The thumb will not change. You're just adding. You start with both the outer notes. G, G, G. If 
if I were to sing just the upper two notes and not the thumb, it can be something like this. La da, la da. Okay, so practice that over different chords. Maybe when the chords changes are very fast, go back to the easy or the quick change one. The simple Travis pattern. If the chords last, bring in the other groove. And the thing with finger style playing is you don't have to play all the six strings when you're playing chords. So it offers a nice concept where you could play your chords as either, you know, the index finger playing a note on this string and the pinky playing on the higher string and they are together a minor third apart B, D. that would also be a minor but you can convert that into major so when you're playing finger style it may be good to know the minor third which is will be very will be very close or just one fret away from the root while a major third is two frets away or you skip one and then play the major, major third. So you can get patterns like this. Minor, major, minor, major, minor, major. And of course with the pattern, the more groovy Travis pattern, guys so that was finger style pattern number three let's move forward to pattern number four right so in this melodic approach to finger style playing you start with a double stop or a group of notes and the topmost note will be your melody so let's say off the top I'm playing C major chord and I just keep repeating the C now you this feels a bit boring and not so melodic so what you could do is move the C The notes in the scale so I could do C B D C on the upper strings maybe go go to the last E string E D F E G F E D C You climb the guitar with that major third minor third technique which I told you earlier you get some very nice melodic stuff almost like a hook which you're creating for a song like for instance this that's out of the melody stuff like
really focus on the upper note at upper register and make that melodic that's basically the other finger style pattern i have one more for you before we sign off and that is a time signature which needs no introduction it's the 68 rhythm So it sounds something like this. How do we count this? One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we could use a very popular pattern of chords used in House of the Rising Sun: A minor, C major, D major. I'm playing like this. F major. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. So that's A minor, C major, D major, F, A minor, C major, E seventh. Let's see how that works with six eight. One two three four five six. One two three four five six. Three four five six. So one two three four five six. So to do six eight. It's almost like the same thing we learned in the beginning, but that was over four four. So to make it six eight, one two three four five six, you have to come back. And you get all these famous songs. Let's go back to House of the Rising Sun. Na na, de 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 de, da da de de de. You could also make it interesting by doing something like this. Tang tak tang tao, tang tak. Bring in a sixteenth note there. Tang tak tang 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 tak tang 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 tak tang ta 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 tang tak ta ta ta. Right guys so those are five finger style guitar patterns or approaches or techniques whatever you want to call them i've shown them on slightly different chord progressions but fairly simple chords on the guitar and i hope you can apply it with a variety of music which you play do leave us a comment with what you thought about the lesson and do give us your suggestions in the comments for anything you'd like us to teach you in the future as well and most of these rhythm patterns will be found on our patreon you could consider heading over to patreon.com the link is in the description and do consider a monthly subscription on that platform you'll get content and supplementary material for almost all of our lessons which we have done in the past and will continue to do in the future right guys thanks a ton for watching again this is jason zack from nathaniel school of music cheers